Good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, just to answer the question, I think uh, when we're looking at artificial intelligence, I want you to take away two things, uh, at least from what I'm talking about today. One is this whole concept of generative artificial intelligence is not one that you can sit over. You, you have to relate to it one way or another. The other thing is, and I know this from, from the industry, we're talking about AI all over the place. And when you double click and start talking to executives about it, they have this fear of missing out. But if you ask them, what do you think you're missing out on? They don't know. So the second thing I want to tell you is, how can you work with artificial intelligence without necessarily have to break your processes, your legacy systems, or your budgets? So these are the two things. I don't believe that there's any way that you can not start engaging with artificial intelligence. And I also want to show you that there is a way that makes it possible to experiment without uh, breaking any budget laws or systems. So that's, that's, the, that's the agenda. I've been, I've been in, this, in this part of the world for the last 12, 15 years. I've always worked with insurance. I've always worked with technology, or business operations, business transformations. In the last couple of years, I've been working extensively with the concept of generative AI, not only AI or machine learning. I'll get a little bit back into this. Now, the first point, I believe that there is no way that you cannot relate to artificial intelligence. And I also know when we start talking about it, and especially when we read the latest reports, it's all about AI is going to take our jobs and this is going to happen. And I don't know how much you, you look at uh, the discussions on, on the advisory firms, the consulting firms. I can't open the LinkedIn without seeing five posts about uh, RIP, McKinsey or whatever. So, so, so there is so much noise about it. If, if we're going to take a tour, a history tour, and I'm not going to make this very long, but throughout history, we had uh, different industrial uh, revolutions. And in, in the, the first industrial revolution was when the, the, the weavers, they were replaced by the automated ways of producing clothes. And there was an uproar with the weavers who tried to burn down the factories, who tried to, to stop whatever they could. And we see this happening throughout the, throughout the different revolutions. But what I want you to know is, for each of these industrial revolutions, we are currently in the third one, for each of them, the net impact of jobs has always been a job creation. It's absolutely true and certain that there's been a lot of jobs that went away. If you look at the third industrial revolution where we are right now, I mean, the, the job where you said with these, I don't know what the English word is, and, and did the calculations, or you used the pen and paper. Well, it was taken over by calculators, was taken over by computers. So these jobs were gone. However, the tens of millions of IT developers are the new jobs coming up. And we'll see exactly the same in what you can call the fourth industrial revolution, where we are seeing the, the advent of generative AI as one of the, the, the biggest drivers. I guarantee you that many jobs that you know them today will disappear, but it will create a lot of new jobs. I'm saying this because instead of trying to fight against it, it's better to, for you to say, okay, how can we actually work with generative AI? There are very few jobs, in my opinion, that will be completely gone. But what will be gone is probably, when I'm looking at, at the wonderful people in this room, I would say 60 to 70% of the work that you're doing today can be done faster and better by AI. The rest is still your brains. The rest is still your intelligence, where you know how to use the systems. But, and I forgot who said it. So what I'm saying is, this is a quote, AI is not going to take your job, but the people who know how to use AI, they will threaten your jobs. And I think this is very important. So um, I don't know if somebody wants a phone that's keeping is yours. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> So, so this, this is my point. I, I, don't, I don't believe that you can sit this one out. It's not, you cannot close your eyes and hope it goes away. It doesn't. But remember, this will create more jobs than it takes away. It's just your responsibility, my responsibility, to be on the forefront of this. Now, if, if you allow me, <clears throat> and it, just one minute of being a little bit technical, and, and I hope it's okay, because we're talking about AI and, and 
we don't even know what we are talking about. So, so allow me one more time down the, the memory lane. The whole idea of, of IT came, ah, this one. This is just another one saying that you have to pay attention, right? Now, the whole idea of IT and IT development started with, with the concept of programming. This is what we know where we put the hands on the keyboard and we do the programs that we're using. Most insurers legacy systems are built by this. We then moved on and became smarter with the introduction of machine learning maybe 10, 20 years ago. Machine learning is, is where you train the computers on one data set and then they have the ability to predict something for the second data set. And on top of this, we build artificial intelligence. I'm going to pause here for a second because when we are talking about artificial intelligence, there are two types, many, but, but two things that I would like to say here. This artificial intelligence has been around for decades. Artificial intelligence here basically took the input from the programming or the machine learning that we're working with and then made some choices based on this. In common for these three things, and th this is actually what I want you to remember, is that these models are what's called deterministic. So if you, if you run a program, you can expect the same output each and every time. Even for what's called artificial intelligence here, because this is where it takes the input from whatever data set I guess and say, okay, if the flags are looking like this or the values are within this, then I will do this. You know it from the simple chat box, if, if you call where you can make the choices and you cannot really deviate, right? This, this is artificial intelligence based on a set of, of predetermined the learnings. You can test it and you can expect if I do this, then this is the output. Now, when generative AI, and this is what we're talking about when we're talking chat GPT, Claude, and last language models came, that is a, a completely different world because all of a sudden the systems can generate new content. And this has a huge implication for how especially regulated financial institutions are working because all of a sudden we do not know, we don't do not know the outcome of what we're working with. If you're going to chat GPT now and you ask it a question and tomorrow and ask exactly the same question, you will get a different answer. That makes it complicated to work with in a business setting. Because how do we how do we control the outcome? How can we actually make sure that it wants what we want to do? This is one of the reasons it's so it's relatively complicated to work with generative AI in the setting that we have today. The, uh, this is the one. And uh, the last point is, of course, artificial general intelligence. And the main, the main driver here is that all of a sudden, uh, no, that's going to be another day. Sorry. <laughs> if you want to know more, then find me after the break. I want you to understand this, and this is what it does not. The chat GPTs of the world, they do not understand anything. They don't have emotions. They don't understand what they output. Basically, if, if you are saying to one of these models that the white uh, fox jumps over the, then the, the machine will use its probability statistics to say the most likely next word is fence. It doesn't know why, it just thinks because of the statistics that I've been trained on, this is the next one. So when you're working with these models, you have to remember this. Now, I want you to, uh, I want you to explain something. Um, that is a study that was done by, um, by Harvard Business Review. They, they, looked at, they looked at how people would do in adjacent areas to their primary work. I'll give you an example, but I just wanted to, to highlight that they, they've said that if you, if you look at ChatGPT, and this is one of the, this is one of the things that I, that I want you to take away from, from today, ChatGPT is like having a, a, a whole shelf of geniuses in your computer. And, and the, whole, the whole concept of working with ChatGPT is to understand how to work with it. And this is the Howard Business uh, Review study, or Howard Business School. So they, they did a study saying, okay, we take a series of experts in a domain field that could be the, the underwriters, for example. And then we take what we can call the adjacent, the adjacent areas, which could be the, the claims or product development. And then even further away, which was called uh, distant outsiders. And then they wanted to see how well, 
how well would these different groups be able to take over or at least support the insiders in their daily jobs? How, how, how um, granular, how experienced would they be if they were using ChatGPT? So basically, if the insider business was, um, I think there's an example here, if the insider business was underwriting, then they would give some tasks to the product development or the claims manager saying, you have to figure out this task, here's ChatGPT, see how well you can do. And they did the same with the more distant outsiders. What they found, what they found is that what's called the adjacent outsiders, they did as well as the insiders in performing their jobs. So all of a sudden, the product developers, if and when they were using ChatGPT, they would be able to do the underwriter's job as well. And this is, this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about huge implications for how we use ChatGPT, how we see our jobs and how we understand what is it that makes us so very special in the world of Gen AI and how do we build on that. For me, the, the implications here are, are fantastic, right? Because that means if you're running a, a, a successful institution, then all of a sudden, when all hands have to be on deck in underwriting or if there's some regulatory changes, you can actually take your whole teams which are adjacent, uh, supply them with the gener generative AI solutions, and then you have a much bigger team to solve these problems. But I think it's, 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 a, it's a, and of course, it's Harvard Business School who did this, so, so it's, 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 it's fairly well grounded. And this is one of the, the really big implications that I see in, uh, in, in the world of generative AI. But also, back to one of the first things that I said, here, you don't have to invest in anything. You don't have to change any of your existing systems. You just have to use the brains of the people that you have to understand how do we put things in and how do we understand what comes out and how do we apply this. This is free of charge. Back to the, to the shelf of geniuses in your computer. This is free of charge. You can all do this now. ChatGPT is free for you to use. And I hope you're doing it, of course. So, so these are some of the things that, that, that I really think stands out. What, what, what I also wanted to highlight, but I don't think I have the time, is um, that there are plenty of other use cases for generative AI in, in Takaful and, and insurance in general. But what, what we see is, and this is, this is kind, of back to, um, kind of back to why don't we see so many generative AI use cases implemented? And that there is, there's quite a few reasons for this. One, one of them is that... Um, we don't have the understanding of generative AI. I, I, you don't have to tell me, but I don't think many of you knew the difference between AI and generative AI before you entered this room, and that's perfectly fine. But you need to have these understandings in order to take your proofs of concept out of the sandbox and into a real-world application. We don't have the capabilities and the, there's lack of clear use cases because one thing is what we can read about, another thing is how do we actually work with this in, in our organization? How do we... How do we set the system up? And this is, a, this is a new world, so we are still practicing, training, learning. We don't have generative AI capabilities. I mean, I don't know how many in, in this country who actually knows how to work with generative AI hands-on. It's very easy to use ChatGPT and CNO, but, but how do you actually work with Gen AI when you're looking at, at the complications um, that we spoke about? Because when, when you take a generative AI program to your IT department, Remember that it is probabilistic. So a generative AI program will not give you the same answer twice. And for a professional IT department, that's a nightmare. Because how do we control, how do we control security? How do we, if then, then if this, then that, how, how do we implement a system where we cannot control the outcome? And we don't, we don't have, we don't have the experience in doing that yet. And these are some of the reasons. That, that stops the larger scale uh, generative AI implementations in, in the industry. But that being said, th there are ways of getting started. Uh, and yeah, I, I guess you know what I'm gonna say now, you, you should get started, right? If, if you're not really are, already are. But two things that I would say for getting started. Number one is the, the, the chat GPT as a genius, right? Understanding the, the findings from the Harvard Business School study, where, where you actually can take the people in the adjacent areas of, of your business functions and 
empower them to, to literally have the same level of competence that the specialists are having when they are allowed to use ChatGPT. This is one thing that you can do, uh, you, you can do immediately and, uh, and, and simply create a much more agile organization because that means that you're not all of a sudden key man dependent, you're not dependent on one person because the people around her or him can actually, when using and when knowing how to use the generative AI, they can stand in and help and support. So in essence, just by using a free chat GPT tool and maybe some hours training in how to use it, you have a significantly more agile organization. And it's free of charge. It's free of charge. And if you want to train people on how to use uh, chat GPT, YouTube is full of it, right? The other thing is looking at what I like to call isolated um, Gen AI use cases. And these are the use cases that can more or less stand alone. Uh, a very good example is, is, is a customer service generative AI agent. You can have such one, you can train the agent in whatever documentation that you have on, on your organization, and then it can run standalone, but still give a significantly better customer experience than any other old chatbot can do. You can use generative AI to, to do uh, document processing. In this, in, in this country, uh, between, uh, between insurance companies and careful operators, we have something we call third-party insurance recoveries, where the insurance companies, they have to send documents to each other. And that's a doc PDF document of 46 pages, poorly copies, poorly scans, poorly photos, everything, that you have to read and understand. You have to make sure that the MRS ID is the same in all 46 pages, that the vehicle identification number is the same all, and so forth. Here again, standalone generative AI can do this in minutes instead of hours. It's a standalone solution. It doesn't interfere with your core systems and your legacy systems. So there are many ways of getting started. And I urge you to, to do this and think of how to get started with this. It, it costs nothing or next to nothing and it enables you to start thinking in where, where we are going for the future it enables you to be more comfortable or confident in the use of generative ai and and at the end of the day it's it's, it's actually quite fun so uh, so I've, I've i've created my my own little uh, ai agent or chat gpt if, if you want you can scan it here the idea here is if if you do this sit with your teams and try to understand what is it that I'm doing today, that I'm repeating doing, that is taking time, that is quite iterative or annoying? Where do we have some issues? And then you can actually, you can actually uh, write that down. In my team, we struggle with X, Y, Z. And then put that into this, um, this program that I've created. And then it'll tell you, okay, if this is the things, then here are five, six, seven, ten different non-intrusive uh, solutions that you can try and play with just to get used to working with, with generative AI. And, and, I, and I think we're at a point now where, where you as, as, um, as responsible leaders, you, you cannot sit this one over, as I said a couple of times. You, you have to do something. And I, and I hope in, in my time here that, that at least gave you some, some pointers to where and how you can get started. But, but one thing is, of course, just starting by opening ChatGPT and, and playing with it, right? But now you have at least two two different use cases on, on how to play with it. You can try and, and simulate that, that you're working in, in, your, in your colleague's seat and see how far you can go understanding his or her's job. Or you can start saying, okay, where, where do we find some of these isolated use cases to start working with, with generative AI? The last thing I want to say, because if, if we have any security experts here, you'll be thinking, what about sending my data out of the house or out of the country to US or wherever? Open AI, has chat GPT or whatever these last language models you want to work with, you can install on a 4,000 DRAM server and put in your in your organization and then data goes nowhere but within your own organization. So that's not an excuse. Thanks for listening. I hope it was uh, somewhat inspiring and, and I motivated you to go do something with, uh, with AI. Thank you so much. <laughs>